Hey guys, welcome back. I have already made the next modification to the S8. And if you didn't catch the one I just made in the last video, uh, which was wheel spacers, go back and check that out. I will put a link to that video in the description below. But for this modification tonight, um, I went ahead and I lowered the car using VCVS. So I wanna show you what it looks like now, and then we're gonna go over to the computer. I wanna walk you through the process on what needs to be done to lower your car if you're doing so using VCDS. So as you can see, the car is sitting quite a bit lower than it was in our previous video. I only have about two finger widths of space on the fender here. You know, I'd like to see if I can get it to drop lower, but I'm pretty pleased with where that's at now. Uh, we'll go to the back back here, the back. I raised it, or I, excuse me, I lowered it all the way down and it was actually sitting too low. It was, it was almost tucking tire up into the fender, but uh, I actually raised it back up. I brought it up to the next setting up, which is a, a five millimeter, five millimeters higher than it was before. It's late now and I'd really like to get some better video of this uh, in the daylight tomorrow so that I can really show you what it looks like. But I hope you can already tell that it looks so much better with its new ride height. Um, the uh, fender gaps are so much better and uh, so let's head over to the computer here uh, so that I can kind of show you my step-by-step -step process of how I went through and I lowered uh, the car using VCDS. Okay you're gonna need three things to get this done today so I have here this is my VCDS cable from Rostec. It has a USB just a standard USB on one end the other end has this large OBD2 connection that Rostec uh, provides to you. And I know there's other cables out there that can do this. And I would recommend sticking with a genuine Rostec cable. They have been proven to be able to do this. And when you're really tapping into your car's computer, the last thing you want to do is get some knockoff cable that might mess something up in your computer. Second thing is a measuring tape with metric units on it. And the third is a laptop running at least Windows 7 or later. So I'm just gonna get the uh, cable hooked up here. We'll just plug it into the USB port. You'll see the cable light up blue. We're gonna take it and we're gonna plug it in under the dash here. There we go, now it's plugged in. The lights will change color, show that it's connected. And for the rest of this, uh, you need to have the car running with the door shut. So you'll have to run the cable out your window and up to the laptop. And it's very important that you're not sitting in your car because the car needs to be level and on a level surface. So I have the car running now. And make sure if you're doing it in the garage, make sure you open your garage doors. Uh, you want to do it in a well-ventilated area for obvious reasons, but you know, just in case that idea didn't pop into your head, please do that. I'm going to go down to the VCDS software you can download from Ross Tech. We're going to open that up. Okay, so this is what the screen looks like. We're going to go to Select. We're going to go down here to number 34 level control. Open that up. That'll open another screen. And the first uh, the first one we want to go to is coding. So this is going to tell your suspension what height uh, to sit at and it'll give you a brief description here. It will pop up, uh, tell you what all the different numbers mean. But the numbers we're looking at today are these numbers right in the middle. So if your car is at stock height, these numbers here that I have set at 0, 1, they're going to be 5, 5. So it's going to look like that. So what those numbers mean, the first number is your front suspension height, and the second 5 there is the rear suspension height. The way that works is you can lower the suspension in increments, and each digit represents a 5 millimeter drop in suspension. So you can go all the way down to 0 in these two numbers. So say you went all the way to zero, that would mean a 25 millimeter suspension drop. So you'll notice before I had mine set at zero and one. So 25 millimeters in the front, 
and 20 millimeters in the back. And that, uh, I'll show you what we can do to adjust that uh, as we move along here. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and change it to one and one. So we're gonna do a 20 millimeter in the front and 20 millimeter in the back. So once you've chosen your selection, go ahead and click on do it and it'll pop up coding accepted. Go ahead and click OK. What the car is gonna do now, next we're gonna go to security access. And so it'll pop up with a little menu here uh, to begin adaptation calibration process. You have to type in this security code 31564. So we'll key that in here, 31564. Hit do it again. Security access accepted. So next we're gonna go into adaptation. So we'll select adaptation. It'll bring up a screen. You wanna to go to the drop down menu. You wanna select starting point for suspension calibration. And so what it's gonna do now, it says wait up here in the corner. It's dropping all the air out of the suspension, uh, front and back. And what it's gonna do is then pump back up so that it kind of gets a sense of where it's at. So while we wait for it to do that, there you can hear the compressor just kicked on. There it's coming up. All right, so now that it's pumped up, you can see this window now says value instead of weight. So we have channels one through four. Uh, channel one being the front left, channel two being the front right, channel three being the left rear, and channel four being the right rear. So we're gonna go back to channel one and you wanna do these in order and save them as you go. So what you're gonna do here is we have stored value right here and new value. So what we're gonna do is take our measuring tape and measure from the center of the hub up to the fender and I'll show you that here. That's where you enter the value in millimeters. All right, so here we are on the front wheel. I'm just gonna show you one because they're all this the process is the same on all of them, but we're gonna measure from the absolute center of the hub here up to the bottom of the fender lip. And so right there I see I have 300 and looks like about 379 millimeters. So we're gonna take that number. We're gonna type that in right here. We're gonna change that number to 379 and hit test. So here you can see this is jumping back and forth from valid to invalid. That means we entered a number slightly too high. So what we're gonna do here is you have to do this in order to change the value, but you wanna go channel up and channel back down. And then you can re-enter the value. So this time we're going to put 378. All right, so we entered 378. We wanna hit test. We have a valid entry now, and we wanna hit save for channel one and hit yes for are you sure. So next we're gonna go to up to channel two and we'll do the same thing. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around and just measure all those so you don't have to watch me do that. So I typed in 378 and again we have the flashing valid invalid which means it's right on the cusp of being a valid number. So let's go channel up and channel back down and we will do 377. And we'll test again. And see there we have a valid again. So save channel two. Yes. And we'll go up to channel three. So in channel three, 
I already had the back lowered to, if you remember back in the coating, I did, I did a number one for the rear and we're doing the same this time. So the measurement is still the same. It's 358. So we're gonna leave it at 358. We're gonna hit test. It is valid. Hit save. Yes. And then we'll go up to channel four, which is the right rear. Again, 358. Test, valid, and then save. So we're gonna hit yes for save. Now this last part is really important. We're gonna go up to channel five. Channel five is where you confirm all the changes you just made. So we're gonna take this zero here it gives you a little description here, but where this zero is, we're gonna change that to one to confirm we wanna make our changes. We'll just hit test. Obviously it's valid. We'll hit save. Are you sure? Yes. And we've saved it. Now we just wanna hit done and go back. Well, once you've closed out, you've saved everything, you hit that uh, done button, uh, everything should adjust on the suspension all on its own. And if you don't like where it sits, you can play with those numbers a little bit. Um, when you're adding values or measurements, the higher the number in millimeters, the lower the car is gonna go. So just remember that when you're kind of playing around with those numbers and trying to get a valid or you know, trying to adjust an invalid and get it adjusted to a valid. Just remember the higher the number, the lower the car is going to go, but it may not accept it. So you need to lower the number until you get a, a solid valid in the, in the box there. So a couple times what I've had to do is go around and kind of uh, shake the fender up and down just a little bit. That can get a invalid to switch to valid. Just make sure you save it when it's solid valid. Uh, not flashing back and forth. Uh, when you save something that's invalid, um, you risk getting the suspension not to move at all. And as you can tell, it's kind of finicky. So, you know, that's what I did to change the ride height. I hope that's helpful. Um, like I said, it's dark tonight. Uh, I'm gonna pull the car out tomorrow in the daylight and uh, hopefully get some better shots of it so you can see what it looks like in the daylight. guys we got it outside it looks fantastic uh, so much lower that fender gap is much nicer now you know it's not on a perfectly level surface here so it's leaning to the back a little bit but holy cow I mean what a difference I think overall we've lowered it about 25 millimeters in the front and 20 in the back uh, what a huge difference then with those spacers Wow it's just looks so much better but uh, yeah I'm really excited with how that turned out um, let's take a look at the other side here here's the front again a little higher on this side because it's leaning back a little bit the driveway is kind of leaning back into the left but fender gap here overall I'm really pleased with how that turned out all right guys well I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you like how it turned out. Obviously this is the first of many mods to this car, so uh, you'll have to tune in to see what's coming next. But I really appreciate you guys watching, and again, thanks to everyone that's helped me, and thanks to everyone that's watched these videos. Um, really like to do more of these in the future, so uh, smash that like button, and like always, please subscribe. Have a great day.